Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard and welcome to the garage renovation work. So today we're going to start the, the work um, which is dismantling part of the actual internal parts of the garage uh, to enable the new sectional door runners uh, to be um, to have room to actually fit in the, in the new garage opening. So as I said before, uh, if you haven't seen before, then please look at the previous videos for the sectional door that's gonna be fitted um, in the video doorway to my Ferrari. And that's in the playlist for supercars. And as I detailed before, but I'll just summarize, this part of the wall is gonna be removed. So about four inches either side of the wall is actually gonna be cut back um, either side to enable a full eight width um, access point for the garage. Obviously this is an old up and over door so this impinges a lot on the actual width of the garage so just removing the actual section the, the actual up and over door and putting a sectional door in will, will, will make a vast improvement on the access width but just while we're doing it might as well give a full nice width there so we're going for the full eight width um, so a full eight width sectional door with actual cutting back part of the actual brickwork as well. The lintel above the top is wide enough or long enough, whichever way you want to look at it, to be able to support that cutback. So we're fine there on with regards to the engineering structural strength of the of the garage. Now the first stage is to remove these um, these sections in the garage door, which are just here to actually enable um, some somebody put them in. It's just here to actually enable um, bits and pieces to put above them. It's not a load bearing section at all. It's just here, uh, just as rafters to facilitate putting, you know, to storage I storing items. But we've got to remove this to enable us to be able to um, have room to fit the sectional door. These will probably go back in afterwards. Next, we're going to do is remove these which are exactly the same as these but a little bit lower down and the reason we have to remove these and these ones from this side is because these this old doorway is going to be removed totally it's going to be taken right back to about here um, this is currently load bearing it's got a, a, a lintel in here at the moment a brick lintel and that is going to be removed because it won't be long enough and a, a thinner steel lintel is going to be put in which is going to span the full width across here and will be supported by the remaining brickwork thereby giving the structural strength back into the garage at that point. This is the old garage doorway because the garage door, the garage was extended at some point and unfortunately the people who did that before I owned this property didn't bother to do it properly and didn't remove the old doorway. So just to summarise, today we're going to remove these sections um, to provide access to put the sectional door in and possibly remove these as well um, to gain access again to be able to replace the lintel and that will be the piece of work that we're going to do today so let's get on with the work doing here is this strip light is attached to one of these one of these um, in fact two of them but it's come off this one two of these beams so just gonna cut this back this is just the the cable clip no wizard of Oz can undo what I've done completely out of luck this time I'm stuck in reverse I gotta get away now but I can't seem to take the lead. Oh, baby. So we've managed to take those beams out from there. I um, don't know quite what you'd call them really. Um, rafters, beams, and they're not structural to the building. So, um, you know, don't want to really call them um, beams, but, um, but they're there on the floor. Quite easy to take down. And uh, just gonna give the ceiling a bit of a clean now. <laughs> now we've got access. Get the cobwebs out so it doesn't fall on the car. Quite rudimentary. So 
So it's finally here, the day of the garage refit. So you'll see from before the work that's going to be performed on the garage. We're going to have bits inside reworked with regards to pillars and the actual door change to a sectional, a Hallman sectional door. Actually, let's walk through and show you. So this is the section that's an old doorway because the garage was extended some time back so this old doorway should have been removed some time ago I believe it wasn't or I suspect it wasn't because it's got a small lintel and they didn't want to actually rework it and do the job properly so all this has been removed today and reduced back to this to this pillar here um, same on this side obviously this really impacts um, the, the width of the garage as you come in this old lintel is going to be removed and a smaller lintel is going to be put put in but higher up so part of this is going to be removed and the, and the smaller thinner lintel is going to be put higher up and it's going to bridge across the end stack to support this because this is a structural bearing wall or structural bearing section and of course all this is going to be removed this will be the final time hopefully that I'll be doing this well, an antiquated way of opening an entrance to a garage these up and over doors just shouldn't be fitted to garages anymore um, but uh, but they're fitted mainly because they're cheap uh, they're a cheap option you, you know to remind you again one of the main reasons why we're doing this is because the a up and over door reduces the width of a door and vastly if you look inside you see the reduction in width with the mechanism, with the spring mechanism, it takes about a good six inches away from the actual width of the door either side. So just with a sectional door fitted where the rail's running side, which gives you full width of the garage, that's going to give us well enough distance. But in addition, we're having part of the actual wall cut away, cut, cut part of the entrance cut away as well, around four inches either side to be able to give us a full eight width um, entrance to the actual garage vast, you know, with, with regards to what we've got now, a vast additional um, amount of space, so that would be well enough space for us. So we'll just wait for the guys to turn up and then uh, we'll give you bits and pieces of a run through on video of the actual update of the garage door and the reworking of the internal of the garage. So the building work's been done, you can see that they've actually reduced the indoor pillars now and they've opened up the width to the entrance of the garage and they're just finishing off now, tidying up the actual side parts and the top and making good really from where they've cut back parts of the wall. And the actual garage door is now going in. We've got the fittings from Bristol Garage Door that are doing the work in the garage. And the fields here rain in the sun are just finishing off on the building work. My life got really scared of you Couldn't keep the door shut and now Spots creeping in Cause I've been stone cold Since you left me here So come home Why won't you reappear Things that I said Came out totally wrong Can't speak of the truth When it's tainted I fell Into a big black hole 
We've got a few of the panels already in there. The running rails are already in, and the guys are just uh, finishing off putting the panels in, and then they'll got to do all the alignment on the actual running rails and put the fascia panels in to tidy up the front end. You've got the seal on the bottom there that's gone in, with the door being set further back. It's now not trying to seal on gravel; it's actually sealing on the actual concrete of the of the base of the garage floor. So it's going to be a lot better seal. It's going to seal the house out a lot. It's going to seal the garage out a lot better. You can see they're just popping in the top, top panel. In effect, that's what it's going to look like. We'll have the plastic side panels there when it's completed. I think even now you can see it's a massive difference. So, new garage door in. It's done, finally. As we can, I'll just walk you through the bits of work that have been performed. If you can remember, these pillars came out to about here, all been cut back. Same on that side, pillar out to here, all being cut back. Obviously, you have to retain the strength, so the old lintel removed and a proper steel or a new steel lintel put in, and obviously put across the supporting pillars. So a whole section of this top member, cross member, has been removed to facilitate raising up the wall, in effect, and to provide the ability for the track to run through because this track wouldn't have fitted where the wall was. The wall came down to approximately here before. So there's no way the track for the sectional um, garage door could have, um, could have been worked into the equation, could have been fitted. Um, and of course the side rails, these side rails needed to be able to come through where the wall was before. So we needed to provision the room to do that. So fantastic job. You might notice that I'm a bit full of dust myself. Well, I'll explain that in a minute. Honest work as they say. <laughs> so this is the sectional door. Fantastic bit of, bit of kit, well worth the effort, makes a massive difference. So let's open it up. You use the remote controls. You can also, um, this unit is called Supermatic E4, this, which is the motor that controls it. This Supermatic E4, it's, it's brushed down the menu underneath it, so it's still got the um, plastic covering wrapping on it. You, it's got a Bluetooth transceiver in there as well, so I can connect my phone to it with an app and you can use your mobile phone on there as well, but um, the remote controls are pretty cool too. So you just toggle up and, and you toggle the, the door open and close with the actual uh, top button. So I'll just show you that. And this big, this Supermatic E4 motor is um, stronger as well. That's the screw that I left up there. Um, so this Supermatic E4 has more torque and is faster at pulling the door as well. It didn't need to be a Supermatic E4, but I, I upgraded the motor because I wanted it to be faster, to have more torque, to be more durable, last longer. Um, it enables you to open the door more times per day, um, per the unit. And uh, just more robust and, and uh, better, better, and better engineered in effect. So press the top button, open up the door. Light comes on. As you can see, it pulls the door a lot quicker than it normally would. So while we've got the door open, let's walk around to the entrance. As you can see, massive difference. The running rails sit inside the actual garage wall, as opposed to impinging on the actual wall-to-wall -wall width. And you can see that the wall has actually been cut back. So they've cut approximately four inches off each width side of the wall or each end piece of the wall so that's been increased by four inches additional width and that's been increased by four inches additional width which has given us a full eight foot width opening so we'll close it from here i don't know why i hold it up i don't have to it's wireless <laughs> i don't have to point it at anything but you get into the habit of pointing things don't you you can see the emblem Holman door and as it comes to nearly closing it slows down to facilitate its it's soft close and then pushes on the on the top there you go 
fantastic job, eh? Massive difference to the garage in both looks and obviously functionality and capability in allowing the car to get in and out easier, a lot easier. And look at the fit and finish. Lovely, lovely piece of kit. I know it's only a garage door, people would be saying, but when you've been, when you've had such a hassle with the opening that you've had before, it makes a lot of difference. So my son and I commonly train in the garage. Um, I, I mentioned it in my previous video about the garage door, that one of the capabilities that is um, very rarely installed on these doors, that is, is available now by Horman, is the ability to vent the actual garage door um, by just having the functionality to open the top flap. The fitters use the actual documentation that I managed to procure directly from Horman which provided instructions on how to install the, the bespoke brackets that allow the top panel to vent because this is very rarely installed and it was quite a job for them setting it up because they'd never um, set up the configuration of the motor to be able to do that top vent um, and in effect to do it all of the panels run along the bottom rail to facilitate that capability none of them run on the top so usually you'd have all of, all the rails all the runners running on the bottom rail with just the top panel running on the top rail so it located on the top but this has got an extra special bracket which i'll show you in a minute from the inside which facilitates the, the ability for the top panel to vent so this is the functionality one button press top panel vents Isn't that cool, eh? <laughs> so you can vent the top panel, it's now latched in that mode and it's very secure, it's, it's as secure, apart from having the gap there, um, you can't force the door, it's as secure as though the garage door was, was fully closed. And to close the, the door again, just one button press and the vent panel, venting capability closes. And then from there, you can vent and open the door fully from that position as well by just pressing the top button. There you go. I'll show you the functionality of the, the venting and you can see the light comes on as I mentioned before that you know we have this additional light which stays on for around three to five minutes. They say five minutes but I actually find it stays on about so three minutes. So let's close the door again. You'll see it start to slow down as the door comes to its closing point. And there you go, this new bracket mechanism. So this new bracket configuration provides the capability for the top panel to vent. Normally, this would have a running rail which would run on the top, on the top rail. So this, this, um, this uh, leg on here, you can't really see it very well, but this would normally have a, uh, a leg on here. And this, this um, wheel, this, this wheel would be running in this top running rail and it would be um, to facilitate it when it comes across to that rail to carry on and to push the panel closed. But obviously that doesn't provision you with the ability to vent just the top panel. So this new capability is this new bracket, this new design of bracket. And as you can see, the actual um, wheel runs in still, it runs in the bottom rail as all the other wheels do. Um, and it facilitates the ability for it to release and let the panel push forward. Um, but when you use the functionality just to pull at the top, you get the capability to have just the top panel opening to vent the garage. Very cool. And it's, it's secure, it's locked, you, know, you, can't, you can't force it. You know, I mean, if you really wanted to, I suppose you could, but it's, um, it's very secure. In that, in that functionality, you've got it locked here, so it can't come up. It's latched against the actual top of the frame system, which is pretty cool. And then you can just continue to um, close it or you can close it again from here. Like so, very cool. So, that's the Holman Garage door. Now one of the other things that I've done, uh, in addition was to actually put the light on inside the garage again, because this light was previously removed uh, because it, it um, fit, was fitted underneath the beams that were um, pre-fitted here before. They had to all be removed to enable the actual rails to be put in for the garage door. And so I've just put the, put the light back in um, and it's a real pain in the backside to do because I have to drill through the actual brickwork to enable the cable to come in to actually locate it through and cable it in. Otherwise you'd add cable hanging around here which um, isn't obviously a good look. 
So I've just tidied all that up as well and swept all around. And if you're wondering why the carpet isn't over here yet, because um, they made good by cementing the bottom parts of the actual floor. And I'm just waiting for that to dry. Obviously it's gonna dry a lot better if the air can get to it rather than covering it up with carpet. So, uh, so yeah, pretty cool. So all done. That's the end of the garage door saga. Hopefully. <laughs> All done, nice secure garage door and uh, a lovely, you know, looking piece of engineered um, door work, which, which is pretty cool. So that's the, that's the end of the garage door saga. Um, if you like the video, then please select like, give it a thumbs up um, so, we know that you're, you're, so we know that you're engaging with the, with the channel. We're trying to move the channel forward and trying to move towards a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So if you can help us with that, please, that'd be really cool. Um, if you're not subscribed already, please think about subscribing. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.